All right, guys, and just before the video starts, I do want to mention that this was sent out to me by Hick Micro. They reached out. I was already thinking of a video idea for these kind of tools. So, of course, I agreed to it. Basically, I'm on a test trial with them. I got to take pictures and different things with it and report back to them. And this video is just going to be like an overview. So, basically, I'm just saying that I did not purchase this with my own money. So make your own decision after the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. All right, so I was not expecting this already, but let's unbox this real quick. We got the Hick Micro handheld thermal uh, camera. It's a thermal imager. High quality, quick measurement. We got alarms. Uh, it comes with an LED light, so you can see if you're in the dark and it has some drop protection so let's open this up let's see what's over here and these are going to be our cables usb-c to usb-a and the wall brick Oh, wall brick, adapters for your country, and that. So that's a charger. But here we go. And we will make some adjustments on this. This is just me using it out of the box real quick. Slim but heavy duty. So I'll be trying this out on the job site. Uh, I just wanted to unbox it real quick before I use it and figure out how to how it works. And I'll show you guys what it can do. So you got a nice screen there and the cool thing is it's USB-C to charge so you can take any USB-C charger that you have plug it into the top and you're charging and this is just a car charger I have that's USB-C to USB-A so they give you the charger but you can use any USB-C charger now, if we want to run through this real quick, let's turn it on. <clears throat> so in order to get to the menu, a uh, little red indicators for charging. You hit the power button, that's the menu. So you have picture, power button is also your okay. Now these are pictures that I've taken, been trying it out a little bit, got to sort through these pictures on the computer so we'll get those out later uh, then you have roll 
which is basically your spots on the screen that you see. They're going to be the little uh, crosshairs. You can add several custom spots if you need that, but I usually like leaving these three on, which is going to be uh, the hottest spot, the coldest spot, and then what you're pointing at, which is the center. So then you can go in here and make your own spots if you want to. Maybe you want to check something on the right side and the left side of the screen. Top and bottom, you can split it how you want. Now alarms, uh, it'll flash at you. You have an audible, uh, I think it's a tone. And then you can put more than, alarm value, and then pre-alarm. So you can set this thing to tell you if you're too hot or too cold. So you can put more than, less than, or if you don't need an alarm, simply shut it off. And emissivity, I think is how you say it, is depending on the surface that you're checking. Now normally I don't mess with it too much, but if you have a shiny reflective surface, you might want to change and use one of these settings or you can custom set your own. Um, that's just because you get, I don't know if it's a false reading, so to speak, but a shiny surface will show up on the color palette differently and it's not going to be actually necessarily hot or anything it's just a reflection so you might want to use this to compensate for the, the surface and reflective and all that um, measuring range you can set it it's negative 4 to 302 which is pretty good for what I do you can cycle through. This is going to be the high end, 212 to 1022. And this is all Fahrenheit. Or you can have an auto switch. And then palettes, I have been trying both. There is a black and white that I have not tried. But. So it's black and white. The wider, the warmer, I think. And then we have, you can set it to just for the alarm, which it's kind of the same thing. It'll be all one color unless something is set to a certain alarm or anything. That's a vent right there. So it's a little different. And then this is the default, which is pretty good for what if you're checking uh, hot and cold spots so you see that's a cold spot the rest of it's warm ish that's a pretty good one that's a default one that it came with and then this is one that I'm used to that I've used before in other thermal imagers that gives you more of a range so like blue is cold red is warm and then in between will be like yellow green so that's a little broader range if you want temperatures your temperatures are in the top corner you got max min and center that's why i said the little crosshairs so wherever you see that light blue crosshair is going to be the coldest spot and i'm not sure where the warmest spot went but there should be one for warmest maybe up here yeah you can see like a little red crosshair come out here and there and then your center is that green one. Of course, it'll change with whatever palette you're using, but those are your three cro crosshairs and they're displayed on the top in temperature. And then you've got your little range right here on the right side to refer to. And then you can see kind of some of your settings on the bottom. And then that range just tell you what the highest and lowest point of your image is. So that is constantly changing as you move it around. All right, and if we keep scrolling, you can set your distance. You can set a white light. There's your flashlight. Uh, you can change the unit from Fahrenheit to Kelvin to Celsius. Temp range is basically what we did already. I left it on auto. You can set the time and date. That's for when you take photos. It it's timestamps them and everything. 
auto off can set it to like five minutes without being used uh, Wi-Fi and hotspot I will show that off because you can connect your phone to it and cast a screen uh, I'm not sure what picture type is offline thermal and then the about and format restore so those are all the settings I'm gonna show you real quick I don't want to mess with too much everything's pretty good the way it is I might just change the palette to the purple one I kind of liked that one so we're gonna go again I've been using it on and off and I've showed it off on a few instances but we're gonna do a I'm gonna try it on a rooftop to show you some lines uh, hot and cold lines compressors and things like that see if we can get a good shot of that right now and here you can protect the camera if you want you can have a manual shutter to open and close it so when you're not using it you want to store it away you can kind of protect that camera there it actually charges pretty quick I had a lunch and a 40 minute drive and it's fully charged so you can get away with charging it on your way to your next call. So I just got here to mine and we're gonna check a few things on the AC. All right, so the thing on the compressor and these lines, as you can see the hot spot on the compressor, which is gonna be the top part right there, the discharge line. And then the other compressor is getting warmer because it is low on refrigerant so you can see that one's way hotter it's like glowing hot uh, let's see 240 and if you want to dive into the electrical you can also use it to check for any unusual hot wires on breakers contactors stuff like that it can it can tell you a lot about a electrical issue you might be having All right guys, and with that same charging port, you're gonna put in that cable to the computer, which brings up a few folders. Uh, it looks like they're separated by date. So if you go in, you can see the images you took for that day. And it says you can store up to 30,000 images on the device itself so it does have internal storage you don't need a memory card or anything like that um let's see what else it says uh six and a half feet for the drop test that they've done i can't test that you don't have to take their word for it and then this uh would be the water dust uh, protection the level that it's at oh uh, here are the white hot black hot Rainbow and Iron Bow are what those pilots are called. I couldn't remember the names. 25 hertz um, refresh rate. It does refresh very quickly because some do take a, a few seconds to calibrate. My other one does. This one calibrates really quickly and it does so uh, very often just so that it gives you accurate readings. Now the one I showed you is the B1L. So that is this model right here like i said they do have several uh they all should be under 550 dollars the one i'm showing you today is at 399 all right so here we are on wi-fi we're gonna enable it and then you pick your uh, wi-fi network get out of there now you can see it's on wi-fi so let me show you what it looks like because you can use this as a viewfinder on your phone and set this up somewhere if you prefer because it does have the little quarter inch uh, threaded part so then you can put it on a tripod so you can access a few things you can take pictures on your phone and you can see what's going on you can read temperature like i said take uh, photos on it 
and just use your phone to control a few things and use it as a viewfinder while you have it set up somewhere. And uh, as long as you're on Wi-Fi, you can also use your phone's personal hotspot. You just connect the device to it. The device itself has its own hotspot. So if we go to hotspot instead of Wi-Fi, you can see that it has a toggle for one. So then you turn it on, it gives you a password. And then you can connect your phone to this. Let's say you have a tablet or something else. Um, all you need to do is download the app and use it. All right, guys, so I hope you guys are enjoying the video. I just wanted to go over the Hick Micro thermal camera. It was sent out to me. I did not purchase this and uh, I'm basically testing it for them. Uh, I do have to send it back just to be real with you guys. Uh, but I would I recommend it definitely. Now, there's other brands out there. There's other thermal cameras out there that are super expensive and they are this high-end thermal camera, uh, which Hick Micro manages to get, you know, a, a good form factor, size and everything in this style. And the price point is like half the price. So I will leave a link in the description for this model specifically, because I did try it out. I did like it. A uh, ton of features, you get to connect over Wi-Fi, ch uh, check things on your phone. You can record video on your phone because you get a couple more features since it saves to your phone storage. Uh, the camera itself, standalone, can take 30,000 images, I believe, with its internal storage, but it can only take pictures. So, uh, like I said, you can connect over Wi-Fi, you can cast it, you can uh, change a whole bunch of settings, and the quality is really good. So, like, I have another thermal imager in my bag that I've used, if you guys have noticed. And the quality on this one is, is far superior and it just responds very quickly. It is a higher end uh, camera and they managed to get it at a decent price point that is not like a thousand dollars. So this is this one specifically is uh, $399, I believe. And they do have a couple of different models that you can pick from for different features. Like I said, I'll leave a link for this one. And if you want to go explore more, they are, they are on Amazon as well and i think they're on true tech tools if you guys buy your parts from there so yeah i just wanted to go over real quick like i said they sent it out to me uh, i do want to do a follow-up video because i was when they reached out i was actually trying to do a video on something like this and i do have a, an idea for a follow-up with this and some other stuff that i have so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and like comment subscribe all that good stuff and i'll see you guys